Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of the Love and Light Show, where your special guest is Sarah Mack. And I'm super excited for this episode because we're going to switch and upgrade our mindset and learn about how our self-worth or low self-worth has been keeping us broke or holding us back from the potential that we have in our life and in our incomes and in our businesses to really just like let go of everything that's not been serving us and move forward and just clear what's not been working for us. So I'm so excited for us to flip those stories, to identify those stories, to do a beautiful meditation at the end to refocus us on our unlimited earning potential. I'm so excited for that one. And definitely get your pen and paper ready because we're going to do journal prompts throughout. This is kind of going to be like a little masterclass experience of like all the awesomeness that Sarah has for us today. I'm unbelievably excited. So definitely say hi to us as you pop on live or on the BeLive platform. So we can't see you until you say hi. So we have four people on live. So definitely say hi so we know who's joining us and feel free to engage with us, ask us any questions, let us know what's coming through for you as you're going through it. Share it out to your friends. If you're like, I have some friends who need to upgrade their money, mon money mindset like now, then definitely do that, invite them in. And we will get into so much awesomeness today. I'm just so excited. So Sarah is a writer, a mindset coach for creatives who, and she loves to help artists, coaches and healers create more money more freedom so that they can have more fun in their lives. So I'm so excited to have you on today. How are you doing, Sarah? Hi, Laura. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I'm awesome. I'm Yay. excited to be here. I'm so excited for you to be here. And this is the Love and Light Show. So every Monday at 1 Atlantic, 12 Eastern, and 9 Pacific, we showcase different lightworkers, healers, amazing badass entrepreneurs that can support you on your healing journey so that you guys can show up and do the inner work on yourself so you can sh sh uh, show up for other people and be the change you want to see in the world so you guys can be a better mom or sister or coworker or healer or light worker or artist so you guys can have awesome positive ripple effects in the world and i'm laura mcphee i'm a joyful goddess so i'm a speaker healer and coach and i love empowering women to get to their dream happy lives so that they can look in the mirror and truly love what they see and let go of that negative voice in the back of their head that says that they're not good enough or pretty enough or smart enough or whatever enough that they can let those go and move forward on their journey feeling amazing feeling fulfilled and so that they can show up and be the change that they want to see in the world and do what they're here to do what their heart's been telling them to do so they can let go of all the junk or baggage that's been holding them back from doing that so that they can truly show up how they need to be so I'm so excited to be doing that in so many ways this week I'm doing some offerings in Moncton which I haven't been to Moncton for a couple months so everyone who's watching in the Moncton area I'm doing three workshops this week essential lifestyle wellness I'm doing one on clearing your money blocks. So it's a shorter version of my Clearing Money Blocks 101 program. And I'm also doing How to Live Your Happiest Life now. So if those are calling your name, reach out to me. Those will be on Tuesday and Wednesday evening this week. So we'll get you into that if that's calling your name. I'm also launching Happiest Me in 2018. That five-day challenge is starting today. So if you want to get into that Be Your Best Self community, it's completely free. If you're like, I'm ready to be the best me now, you don't want to wait another week, or another month or another year, you're like tired of those excuses and you want to be a better me now, definitely get into that. I'm also doing a webinar format of that. Some people were like, I don't have a whole week, but I just want some information. I'm doing a webinar next week on it. So if you want to register for that, I'll be sure to put the links in the comments after so you guys can truly show up and be a happier version of yourself now. Like your kids deserve it. Your friends, your partners deserve a happier version of you. So do you. It'll feel so incredible to end this year on a super high note and have an even better 2019. So I'm so excited to get into Sarah's awesomeness and welcome all the people who've been popping on live. So hi, Melissa. Hey, everyone popping on live. All kinds of people. And oh, George, hi, guys from Yorkshire, UK. Cool. And Sarah has a beautiful accent. I love her accent so much and that she's been traveling. Our like pre-interview was amazing. I loved all the places that she's gotten. She's just a beautiful soul. <laughs> Laura, you're amazing. Thank you. And I've also just been sharing this on my page too. Um, awesome. I've got my page in group, so I hope we'll get lots of people participating. Hi to everyone watching. Yes, definitely. So do you want to share a little bit about your story for everyone who's unfamiliar with you? And then we'll pop into all the awesomeness of today's content. Yeah, thank you. So I'm a writer and a mindset coach, and I'm really passionate about helping creative women to have more fun and freedom and earn more money doing work that they're passionate about and mm -hmm. that came out of my transition from you know I've always been creative I've always been involved in you know I grew up as a dancer and in, in the theater then I got into film I was working in film production for many years did Very my cool. master's in film 
And then I had a massive burnout because I was working in corporate film film world, working like really, really, really long days. And mm. it was a lot of, you know, like kind of like being in the army. It was really logistical, lots of driving, lots of like moving furniture. Um, <laughs> you know, it was a great experience, but it wasn't creatively fulfilling for me. Right. So I think, it, you know, my burnout was my body's way of telling me like, no, no, no. There's mm. more fun to be had if you right. only listen and go start going in a different direction. So that's kind of what began my um, you know, my transition to working as a writer. And initially I didn't know what I wanted, what I was gonna do. All I knew is that I wanted to be location independent because mm-hmm. I love the travel, I love moving around. Freedom is like number one priority for me. Awesome. I love that so much. Yeah, so I really just planted that seed and I, you know, I thought, oh, maybe I'll have to retrain and like, do you know, it's going to take a really long time. But I um, just sort of followed the breadcrumbs and allowed my intuition to guide me and just trust that I would figure Mm -hmm. it out. And, um, you know, obviously the opportunity started coming in because I was open to them. And my friends invited me out to Bali and Indonesia to Mm -hmm. help them on their startup. Mm -hmm. So I put all of my stuff in storage. I was like, right that's it for me for film production and on the crew side of things anyway. And I um, got one way to get out to Bali. Nice. And Bali is one of those places that kind of like, that I've, you know, I spoke to a lot of people out there and they're like, it's a very common story that people arrive to Bali for one reason and then everything falls apart and it turns out you are there for another reason. Interesting. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a very interesting place. Like it's like nowhere else in the world. It's very magical. There's mm. a lot of magical people there. Um, cool. There's a really big uh, like digital nomads community there. Mm-hmm. So that's where I met a couple writers and, you know, my curiosity was piqued and I just asked them like, you know, how do you do what you do? And mm-hmm. uh, this wonderful writer that I met, Hayley Hogan, she's actually a romance writer and editor. Mm-hmm. And uh, she was like, this is how I launched my writing career in a few months, you know, just online. And it's amazing. It's really fun. I was like, oh, I'm going to do that. (laughs) So so yeah, I went to India to buy myself a little bit of extra time. Mm -hmm. And I was like in the the foothills of the Himalayas in Rishikesh and just like Mm -hmm. figuring out how to, you know, start helping people with my writing skills online. Mm -hmm. And it's really just been an evolution um, that just like one step at a time, just figuring it out as I go along. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was four years ago. And you know, I now have my copywriting business, Juicy Copy, which is thriving. Mm-hmm. And I now have my coaching business with Sarah Mack, where I support others, you know, with all of the, the tools and the resources and the shift and transformation that I made myself mm-hmm. to build a life that gave me all the freedom and like creative fulfillment and, you know, allowed me to bring in a lot more income doing something that I find really creatively fulfilling, that I find really meaningful, where Mm -hmm. I really have freedom over, you know, who I get to work with, what kind of impact I get to make. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and it's been completely life-changing for me and amazing and opened up so many more um, opportunities for me. And, you know, the sky really is the limit when you're your own boss. Yes. (laughs) So this is why I'm really passionate about helping other creatives because for me, a lot of that journey has been learning about money mindset and really understanding why the way that we value ourselves is really integral to succeeding. And it's a really common story that creatives, especially creative women, especially like empathic, sensitive women, healers, coaches, um, you know, have all of these really incredible skills that maybe haven't been fully acknowledged, you know, in our economy, Mm -hmm. um, in our societies. Maybe we've been told, you know, that we are, um, um, we shouldn't pursue some of those things because they won't right. create a good right. living for us. And that simply isn't true anymore. We're living mm-hmm. in a really creative um, economy now where you yes. need to have that creativity and intuition to constantly evolve, constantly keep up with everything that's changing all the time and to really be able to identify the values that we have to offer that we can use to make other people's lives better, mm-hmm. which, which as creatives, mm-hmm. as healers, um, um, like really, really needed at the moment. So it's really important to be having that conversation with ourselves, having that self-awareness about, you know, where we have been valued, whatever it is that we have to offer those parts of us that maybe we've hidden because we got made fun of or because we didn't fit in. 
um, um, and actually, you know, it's like that. That's our goal. That's really what is so needed. That's our power to be able to help people and serve people, and to be able to create an amazing life for ourselves. Mm -hmm. I completely agree, and other people are totally agreeing too. Absolutely, so true. Amazing realities to what the world requires. And Natalie's loving it too. She gave us a thumbs up. <laughs> George has been making all kinds of comments. Natalie, give us hey, a thumbs up. <laughs> I would love to hear um, those of you who are watching what it is that you do or maybe something that it is you desire to do mm -hmm. or should do or maybe there's that like little secret dream that you have. Maybe it's a creative project. Maybe yeah. it's like a business idea. Um, I would love you to, to share that and like mm -hmm. what you do or what you desire to do or, you know, maybe just where you know that you're unsatisfied and you want to create something different even if you don't mm -hmm. know what it is um because there's real power in declaring your desires publicly you know especially when it comes to when we've been hiding away those parts of ourselves maybe denying them mm -hmm. um as soon as we start to like really acknowledge like oh i desire you know i love you know healing people or doing this kind of work or that kind of work or this kind of creative project is calling me and i have no idea how i'm going to make it work but it's a genuine desire for me that won't go away mm -hmm. once we give ourselves permission to acknowledge those desires that's when all the doors start opening that's when we start seeing possibilities anytime we have you know shame attached to it or we're trying to hide it there'll be parts of our psyche that are rejecting it and so we just right. won't see the opportunities mm -hmm. i completely agree and kat said in the process of that shift now so that's awesome that you're in the process keep going yeah keep going and it just gets better and better Yes, I completely agree. And George said, we'll support to get my short book on consciousness and mental health published. So that's awesome. Just Amazing. edit and finish adding a few extra bits. Um, more, okay. When there's too much on top. Cool. Very cool. Good luck with your book. Yeah, that's awesome. That. Dan, that's such an important conversation around mental health mm -hmm. that we need to be having more. For sure. And Kat is an artist and a shaman and incorporate the two parts of my life. Very cool. Amazing. Beautiful. Thank you guys for sharing. And even if you're on the replay, definitely hashtag replay and share what you're really desiring to do in this world. Yes, yeah, share it and declare it because you never know who's watching, right? Mm -hmm. You never know who might connect with you. I've met it's incredible nice people online. Like having comments sections are like a, the most beautiful things because then you're like oh that person is like the next step for me or like that would totally collaborate with my thing or like it's beautiful take advantage yeah. of online guys it's awesome <laughs> yeah definitely so um yeah i guess we could dive into a few tools yeah. and ideas that are really going to support you mm -hmm. so um the one tool that i always share which I think is important to be doing consistently, no matter where you're at, no matter what stage you're at. But I mean, we're always growing, we're always expanding, we're always looking to get to the next level of fulfillment, mm -hmm. satisfaction and success, whatever it is that we're doing. So, um, you know, really to take, take stock of our value mm -hmm. and uh, value you until you value yourself. Nobody will pay you until you have recognized and like, deeply embody the value that you have to offer. Yes. So um, no matter how much money you're earning, there's always more, you know, there's always, um, you can always open yourself up to ways of providing more value for people using your skills, your innate abilities, everything that you are now as you are, you know, without yeah. really like getting out of that conversation of, oh, I need to do this qualification or I need to be more before I can, you know, really provide value. Like that's a really right. disempowering conversation. You have mm -hmm. enough to provide all the value um, that you could possibly be able to receive right now in this moment. Mm -hmm. um, so really, you know, give yourself the time, create a page, give yourself a big piece of paper and just fill it with all of the things that are valuable about you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can start because we live in a very, um, you know, sort of linear, um, kind of like certified um, world where mm -hmm. whether it's a school degree, whether it's a particular job qualification, you know, all of those things we tend to find very easy to talk about probably because you put them on like a resume at some point. So you can start there and just write down, you know, all of the courses that you've taken, maybe, you know, all of like some of the, all of the knowledge that you've embodied and that you've really, you know, committed time and energy to learning. So you can start mm -hmm. there, obviously that's extremely valuable. 
Um, but then from there, you can break down, you know, what are the qualities that I um, either had to bring or had to develop to be able to um, embody, you know, that knowledge or, or this experience or these qualifications. So you can start there, you know, maybe it was resilience, maybe it was persistence, determination, um, you know, think of all of the qualities that you have shown in all areas of your life that does, doesn't have to be in your career. You know, mm -hmm. look at the relationships that you've cultivated and developed, the communities that you've contributed to, and really take stock of all of that value that has come as a direct result of you just being in the world. Mm -hmm. And write it all down, every single little thing. Um, and then, you know, take it even further and start to appreciate your physical body as well. Um, you know, every single part of your body has value and it's serving mm -hmm. you and it's helping you, <clears throat> excuse me, to show up in the world. So, um, so, you know, break it down, like go into so much detail and really use this exercise as a way to really like deeply appreciate how much value you have as a human being right now as you are. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, relationships, qualities, you know, experiences, things that you've done, challenges that you've overcome, that mm -hmm. life has brought you, you know, look at the qualities you had to um, depend on or to develop um mm -hmm. or to bring out in order to survive in that situation in order to thrive um you know look at all of your successes look at all of the ways you've overcome challenges and failures um mm -hmm. and really take that time to um acknowledge and embody your value mm -hmm. um and you know also look what you do for other people as well um yes. look at how you have impacted other people's lives whether that's making somebody smile, whether that's, you know, making a contribution in some way, whether that's through your business, through your work, through your creativity, mm -hmm. um, and really take the time to understand the value that that provides to other people and why that's important. Mm -hmm. um, that's a question I always really like to ask my clients is, um, you know, why is it important that you do this work? Like, what is the value of this work? And that can be another prompt as well. Ask yourself, what is the value of this work that I'm pursuing now, whether that's your book, whether that's your creative practice, whether that's your, mm -hmm. your shamanism, your healing practice, um, you know, really break it down. What is the value of that work and why is it important? You know, it's not just about changing that one person's life in a little way. Think about how they then go home to their families. And, you know, as you were talking about earlier, Laura, that mm -hmm. ripple effect that yeah. happens within communities and how mm -hmm. if everybody's taking these little actions and causing these little ripple effects, how that has an impact on our world as a whole. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you think about it like that, and like <laughs> why it's really important that we do this work, mm -hmm. suddenly all of those excuses, all of those reasons to procrastinate, all of those stories about, oh, but what if I'm not good enough? They become a lot smaller and less important when you look at it from that perspective. Mm -hmm. I love that so much. And I recently had that kind of exercise where I had to write down all the things that I've learned on my like spiritual journey because people were starting to be like, so you started doing this like a couple years ago and I've been doing this for a couple years and nothing's working and stuff like that. Like I've been reading books for two years and I'm like, no, no, no. Like I was reading books for years and doing digital programs for years and doing all these things for years before. I started getting my own certifications before I started doing one-on-one -on -one mentorship with coaches and healers and people that would support me on my journey. So like I had to really kind of like lay it out and be like, these are all the things I've done over a decade to get me to this point. It's not just like a one day, one year, one month experience that like gets you to doing all these things at once. It's like very interesting for people to take that time to really look at all the things that they have. Cause I find a lot of people also will be striving for the next thing and they take for granted what they know now and how much it can help the older version of themselves who's still watching them, who's watching their Facebook lives, who's watching their posts, who's watching whatever. Cause I do that too. I like totally take for granted what I know now. And then I'm like, right, two years ago, I would have killed for this information. I was paying thousands of dollars to learn the things that I know now that I help people with. So it's like very interesting to take that step back and be like, there's so many things that I know and it helps so many people. And then it'll help so many people once you shift them. So cool. Totally. Yeah. And I think, yeah, that is really important to recognize that even if you are in the beginning of a practice, like you're starting a new business or you're making that shift to earning your money, you know, in a way that you haven't before. Obviously, there's so many stories that crop up around that, like mm -hmm. imposter syndrome or like, you know, I'm new to this. Right. Um, you know, will people really pay me for this? Or like, can I really charge this much money? No, 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 no. You know, all of that stories that bring in the, the uncertainty. 
-hmm. And yeah, it's really important to recognize that that whole, like the roots of, of your experience that have brought you to that moment and to not discount them and to remember that, yeah, you really are capable of, of providing service for people. And, you know, often when you start shifting the way that you're earning money to something that feels really aligned and more of like an embodiment of who you are, like mm -hmm. authentically, like really fully who you, how you want to express yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, there's often some little skills that need to, need to be learned on like the business side of things that are maybe new to you, but just, you know, really always come back to that, what people refer to as your zone of genius. And that thing that you are really good at that is innately, you know, a result of your entire lifetime and everything that you've experienced and how, how valuable that really is. And really allow that conversation to bring you confidence to, yes. you know, it's like without, mindset is so important. You hear entrepreneurs talk about it all the time about how it's 90% of the work because when you are rooted in confidence in your value, all of those little finicky things that you have to learn along the way, you know, uh, and we're all just kind of figuring it out as we go along, mm -hmm. all of those things become much smaller. They become more like molehills rather than mountains that you have, have to overcome when you, you're you really rooted in that confidence mm -hmm. and that trust and that belief and the value that you have to provide and, and the passion that you have for, you know, how much this is going to impact people's lives when you when you really follow through with the work. Yes, I agree so much. And other people are agreeing. Kat says, totally, I'm only recently recognizing the unique set of skills I bring to the table. So that's awesome that you're recognizing it. Good job. Yeah, amazing. And George said, this is so empowering. Checking <laughs> more awesome things. And Yogi Kumar gave us love eyes. <laughs> oh, yay. Sorry. So, um, yeah, so around the self-worth conversation, for me, it's really about self-care. And, mm -hmm. you know, what does that mean? I like to think, you know, we have to treat ourselves like we are our most precious I want I'm trying to think of a better word than possession but resource yeah. you know without you nothing works without you um you know being taken care of you cannot provide for your family you cannot exactly. show up and serve your clients so um <clears throat> and you know obviously when we have come up against a lot of these stories about you know being rejected for who we are because maybe it didn't fit into our parents idea of what they thought was going to be a good life for us or maybe our schools or our, or our teachers idea of what they thought would be a good life for us so we you know we've got a lot of those internal conversations that that do create conflict mm -hmm. and doubt and uncertainty and have caused us to question our worth over the years so you know it's really our responsibility to make sure that we are nurturing that um, that loving and supportive conversation for ourselves, and we're you know just having that awareness and um, identifying where maybe we've got those little residual stories mm -hmm. that are running in our subconscious mind and are driving our actions, are causing us to doubt or resist or procrastinate um, on taking action, and. Um, you know, that's where journaling is a really amazing self-reflection tool. If you do notice that you're coming up against some resistance or you're t maybe talking yourself out of something or it's taking so much longer than you know it really needs to take. Mm -hmm. That's probably when some of those sneaky little unsupportive beliefs are at play. So, you know, just really always asking powerful questions. Um, you know, what would it take for me to really believe in myself? What would it feel like to fully embody my value? Um, these are really excellent sort of journal prompts that you can go into to really tune into you know firstly your value secondly what it what it feels like to not have any of those doubts and resistance mm -hmm. and that can involve cutting people out you know if there's somebody who's who's doubtful or who's trying to keep you small or who's rejecting a part of you that you really want to bring to the world step away from that you know you have mm -hmm. to set boundaries you have to nurture <clears throat> excuse me whatever um you have to nurture the value that you have to offer. And that all really comes through taking care of ourselves and really recognizing like, what are some of the ways that we're not taking care of ourselves? whether that's through setting boundaries, whether that's through giving a lot of our time and energy away to a type of work that isn't really um, an alignment or an authentic expression of, um, you know, what would bring us the most fulfillment and would create the most impact in the world. Mm -hmm. um, and really taking responsibility for that and owning it and committing to that transformation, committing to yourself, increasing, you know, turning up the volume on that conversation with your intuition, because you're the only one that really knows what the 
the best action is for you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I always say it doesn't have to be hard. You know, it doesn't have to be difficult. In fact, when we step more into alignment with the things that we're really passionate about and that are, you know, really more aligned with the skills that and the um, the value that we have to offer, it gets so much more fun and it gets so much more yeah. easy than trying to fit yourself into a box that's not meant for you. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it's really all about coming back to having the courage to let go and just identifying the next step. What is the next step for you? Because you only need to know one step at a time. All you need to know, if all you need to know is I need to quit this job, then quit that job and yeah. allow that space to open up for something new to rush in because it always does. Mm -hmm. You'll always find an idea. You'll always get inspiration when you create the space for it. Um, but if you're living in fear and doubt that that will happen, then that's going to keep you in the same place. It's not going to open you up um, so for true. change. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, just really being intuitive about what the next step for you is. And you don't have to worry about the rest. Let the rest unfold, um, mm -hmm. you know, one step at a time just follow what feels good. And sometimes it doesn't make sense. You know, sometimes you might get an intuition to take a class that really isn't related to your career, but that could be a modality that just, you know, balances you out, brings you um, just more energy and makes you feel alive, makes you feel more inspired. And then that, you know, opens you up to a new idea or more success, um, you know, in your career. Mm -hmm. So really just, you know, tuning in every day, making sure you're meditating, making sure you're connecting to yourself and, um and really allowing yourself to hear your intuition and allowing yourself to trust it and mm -hmm. finding that balance between you know obviously seeking mentorship and people who can help you um and listening to them and allow allowing them to guide you but really making sure that it's you're making the decisions for you because you're the only person that knows what's going to make you happy you're the only person that knows really what it is that you enjoy doing and that you're really capable of of um of serving people doing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's yeah, really that's important. Right. Just one step at a time, finding a way to tune into your intuition and really build that trust and learning mm -hmm. to take action on those intuitive nudges that you have is really, really important. And really, you know, taking care of yourself physically, mentally, emotionally, making sure you've got those practices and those habits and those tools in place so that every single day you are taking care of yourself. It's not just, you know, just at the weekend or it's right. not like just one time a year mm -hmm. because um yeah and just really noticing like where you're giving away your energy or your power and where you're allowing other people to tell you what to do where you're allowing other people's priorities to take precedent over yours um mm -hmm. and really you know that's what the self-worth and the self-care conversation is all about because when you take care of you Ooh. We lost her. I'm sure she'll click the link to come right back on, guys. But I'll check into the comments while we're here. So, Susanna, if I could just journal consistently for once. So I'd recommend letting go of the past where you weren't journaling consistently because it kind of feels like you were a little bit annoyed with yourself for not doing it consistently right now so I'd recommend clearing or like even like forgiving yourself being like I forgive myself for not doing it in the past and if you're like I need to journal journaling is like a big thing then commit to doing that that's like your one thing that you're doing for the next 30 days or however long it takes to become a habit and even if it's, if it's just like a sentence if you're like I just want to do one sentence every day and that's my journaling and as long as you open your book and write one sentence then you've succeeded then you don't have like a big thing because I find that sometimes people are like sometimes I journal and have awesome like couple page sessions and then they're like always comparing to what they've done before so I'd recommend letting go of anything that's been holding you back from doing that so any excuses that you have and be like I'm just going to be successful if I open my journal and write down one sentence like I feel like this or I feel like I should be doing this or like I feel called to you or you get asked you're asking your higher power to come through I would recommend that and we have Sarah back Hi. I'm so sorry about that my no um, laptop tried to reboot in the middle <laughs> no worries I was just checking into the comments and then Jazz hi ladies what about feelings of apathy feelings of apathy I'm gonna think about that one for a moment what do you think about that one Laura 
I'd recommend changing your state because I know that he's commented on some things before. So if you tend to be in one state a lot to be like, I'm shifting into this new version of myself. So creating even a page of like this next version of yourself, who they are, how they show up, what energy they bring to the table, what traits they have, what habits that support them on their journey so that you can shift in one baby step at a time, get those into your self-care arsenal so that you can change how you show up on your day-to-day -day basis. That's what I'd recommend. Yeah, that, yeah, that's it, exactly. Awesome. And I think, I think that's always like the number one most important task of the day is to choose your state mm -hmm. and to yes. create. And that was a huge turning point for me because I, had, I suffered from chronic fatigue and depression for about five years. Mm -hmm. And it was because I really didn't understand how to maintain my emotional health. I didn't really have those tools. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I obviously, we're always taught to, to look at our physical body. So I was doing all of that. I was doing, you know, the yoga and the meditation, supplementation, really mm -hmm. clean eating. Mm -hmm. And I really, like, recovered a lot of my health. That awesome. way. but it got to a certain point where I was like there's more and I knew you know and I was like there's there's more to it than this like I know this is this isn't it and that's what really led me to question and learn more about emotional health and spiritual health and that was what awesome. took me to the next level and like drastically improved my health and well-being mm -hmm. and um one of the people who really changed that for me was Tony Robbins I went to see yes. his um unleash the power with him I love that. <laughs> yeah, and he's just a master of like, he teaches you how to really take ownership and change your state. Mm -hmm. And he has this little, um, uh, it's kind of like an incantation, he calls it. It's on mm -hmm. YouTube called I Am The Voice. Yes. And it's just a way of like, he's like, get up in the morning and like shout and declare what it is the state that you're going to embody and just make that decision because it is it's always a choice we always get to choose yes. what state we embody mm -hmm. and sometimes it takes something drastic to shift if we've been in a funk for a while mm -hmm. uh, but doing something like that every day you know going getting out and going for a walk doing some physical exercise every day like movement every day is an absolute must for maintaining good emotional health and a good state like it's such a simple way to mm -hmm. shift off your state is to just move your body even if it's going for a, a walk for, for half an hour it'll do it for you mm -hmm. and um yeah and I think that's the most the most important strategy that we can embody is just choosing the state that we're gonna bring to our day because from that state we can accomplish anything we can overcome any challenge and be resilient against you know difficulties that are thrown away so yeah Mm -hmm. solid advice and and also just being patient you know if you have a down day yes. that's fine just pick up and do your best and being always, gentle. Be, always be reaching for a better state and just do it consistently and you will get there even if mm -hmm. it takes a little bit of time I completely agree and Kat said welcome back and said that she found that apathy can be a way we self-protect from a wound that is old and very sensitive so maybe you want to reflect on that and see what might be coming up for you that might need, need some healing work. Totally. Yeah, that was the other thing that came up, actually, when you said that is just asking where you're numbing out, mm -hmm. asking where you're not you're not feeling something painful. And, you know, that's been a huge part of my transformation is really giving myself permission to go in there and feel the pain that I was numbing myself from or distracting myself yeah. from. And mm -hmm. it's not pretty sometimes. Like, it's not always fun. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the process of transformation. That's life, you know, just like a mm -hmm. like snakes kind of shed their skin. Like there's all these ugly and like messy parts of, of transformation. And we're always regenerating. We're always rebirthing. We're never staying the same. And it's not possible. So, <clears throat> you know, it's OK to like go through a period of time where you're doing some self-inquiry and and. Uh, you know, going into those like gross emotions that maybe you didn't really want to feel because once you once you understand the process and you recognize that when you allow yourself to feel your emotions, you allow yourself to heal any wounds and any pain, like the mm -hmm. life on the other side is just like so much better having done it than rather trying to carry it around and resist it and ignore it. Mm -hmm. I completely agree. And I know that when I learned how our feelings work, I was like mind blown because I'm like, okay, so I only feel a little bit happy or like a little bit sad because I don't want to feel the trauma and the pain and all the stuff that happened in the past. So there's no way I'm going to feel joy and bliss and elation and freedom and incredible, incredible, like 
mind blowing experiences that I'm desiring. So yes, in the moment, sometimes those things at the beginning can be hard because you have to dig into those things and heal those wounds and look at the stuff that you've been numbing out for quite a long time, but it's so worth it on the other side. Like I always tell people that, but in the mint, like in the minute where you're like, I want to give up and it's so hard and just it's overwhelming or whatever, be gentle and be like, it's going to be worth it. Like I chose doing this work and I can do it because it's coming up for me. Like you're not going to be given steps on your journey where you're not going to be given the resources or tools or support systems to help you. Like when the student's ready, the teacher appears. So when you move forward on that journey, you're always super supported. You just have to like look for those and keep making those baby steps. And then you'll have the most incredible life on the other side. Yeah, so true. And really, you know, choosing to create support for yourself, that's self-care. Mm, like yeah. Choosing to invest in yourself, choosing to get emotional support and emotional care, mm -hmm. you know, all the time, not just when things are difficult. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, choosing to take care of your physical body, choosing to be surrounded by people that you trust, that really have your best interests at heart, that, you know, really want to support you. Yes. Um, to, for you to be happy and for you to live the best version of your life, whatever that looks like to you. Mm -hmm. Yep. And Kat says, the best way out is through and completely agree. Self-care, self-care and more self-care. I'm all about self-care. I completely agree. <laughs> yeah. And, awesome. you know, it's such an important conversation to have because we're, because it's, we're just reconditioning ourselves from, you know, living in this paradigm where we think we have to work really hard to get what we want and that we have to sacrifice our health and we have to sacrifice our relationships and that's just like a, a really like disempowering conversation mm -hmm. that some, we come up against quite frequently but so yeah. it's really important to to unplug and consistently engage in those conversations of how to really take care of ourselves and be gentle and loving and create from a place that feels good most of the time yes mm -hmm. I agree so how do you recommend people first identify when they're like, I don't know what's wrong, I'm broke right now, and like all these things are just going wrong. How can they identify it so they can begin flipping those stories? That's a great question. Um, and yeah, a great exercise is to just um, write down all of the stories that's, that's, that are coming up for you. So if there's a situation that's bringing you um, stress or anxiety, you know, it's really important to allow yourself to feel those emotions. Mm -hmm. and just take a pen and paper and just write down all of the reasons why you're feeling that way if is it you know I don't have enough money um I don't know how I'm gonna pay my bills like I don't know you know how I'm gonna get clients for this work I don't know if I'm even good enough all of those doubts and uncertainties insecurities and anxieties get them all down on paper and recognize that they're just stories and you have the power to flip them so you know first thing is just getting them all out Mm -hmm. bringing them to light, giving yourself permission to have them, you know, forgiving yourself for having them. Um, and, and then one by one, just going through and flipping it. And, um, you know, you can, there are different ways of flipping your belief systems, you can completely go the other end of the spectrum. And, um, you know, you could be like, I don't have enough money to like, I'm a millionaire. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if you write, if You're you like, say, I'm a millionaire. <laughs> every single day between now and when you're a millionaire you know if you're really committed to that um it will work for you and that yeah. thought will be con consistently like planted in in your mind I mean I haven't mm. actually proven that for myself yet <laughs> but I do fully believe that it works um <laughs> because I've seen the way that our mind works and I've the done way it that for we... baby steps so I can yeah, totally test exactly. that. <laughs> because you're, you're basically like putting in a it's like putting in um, a program into your computer, into your GPS system. Whatever you're focusing mm -hmm. it on, it will start to look for clues and ideas and ways that you can create that result. Mm -hmm. um, but you can also take baby steps and use words like, I'm now open to having mm -hmm. enough money for all that I need and desire. Or yeah. I'm now choosing to create enough money for all of my needs and desires because mm -hmm. those help to kind of override the ego that will always rise up and be like no but that's not true or mm -hmm. like no but you can't do that and you're not good enough mm -hmm. so either I'm open to or I'm choosing are like really great ways to kind of like shift yeah. in a more empowering direction so you know brain dump all of those limiting beliefs like however many you know as you can like 20 30 50 like get mm -hmm. them all down there this is such a really a, like such a transformative exercise doing this mm -hmm. and then you know play around with with the the story 
the empowering story until you find one that feels good for you, that feels true, mm -hmm. or that you really want to commit to and just write them out and then start writing them out every day. Um, another thing you can do is record them in your own voice, like put on a meditation track from YouTube um, and just record your voiceover reading all of those new beliefs and really embody the feeling of what it will be like um, to do that. Make sure you're in a really good place when you record that and listen to it every day. Like when you're going out for a walk, when you're, you know, first thing as you wake up in the morning, last thing at night, when you're really, you know, we're very like open to impressions um, because we're in that more, I think it's like alpha brain mm -hmm. state, don't quote me on that, but whatever <laughs> the one that makes you uh, remember things more. Mm -hmm. And um, that's such a powerful exercise and just notice how you feel after you've done it. You'll mm -hmm. feel like a lot of release and relief and just like calm and more positive and um, you know, like less uncertain and anxious. Mm -hmm. so that's a really great one to do and the, the mind is you know reconditioning is just a case of repeating 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 always coming back to focusing on what we want rather than what we don't want exactly so making sure that you have a daily mindset practice mm -hmm. and that's a non-negotiable for you that's how you create transformation that's how um you know you start to notice possibilities for change and just notice how that happens you know like for me when I changed my belief around that making money was hard and I changed it to making money is easy, mm -hmm. so much stuff shift for me and I started offering different services. I started, you know, changing the direction that my business was going in so that it was more around activities that I really loved and found really fulfilling mm -hmm. that I was better at. So I completed in less time and mm -hmm. it just made my life so much easier. I wasn't like you know, struggling and spending hours over the type of work that maybe I didn't enjoy so much or I wasn't good at. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, really just notice as those new um, new beliefs start to kind of like seed and sprout and germinate and you start to see things differently, you mm -hmm. start to take action differently and like life becomes so much better and more easy. And just really checking yourself and unplugging from those repetitive stories that come up of, you know, instead of thinking I don't have enough money, switch that to, you know, what a 10 or 20 cash generating activities I can take today you know mm -hmm. what are some opportunities I can take action on to create money and just start shifting the conversation that you're in around money from mm -hmm. one that's really disempowering and doesn't feel good to one that is full of possibility and is empowering where you're really taking responsibility for um for the money that you're earning and the way that you're doing it mm -hmm. I love that and it's interesting when you were talking a question that came in my inbox the other day was I'm still trying to like manifest, like I'm in all this debt. So I'm still trying. So first off, I was like, get out of that trying energy, but they couldn't, didn't want to say like, I'm a six figure coach or anything like that. Like they couldn't get themselves to say something like that. It seemed like the millionaire thing for a normal person right now. It's like, okay, so do your next thing. Do you like, I love being financially free. I love seeing money in my bank account. I love that there's zero balances on my credit card. Let's get to that baby step so you can move at a more manageable rate. Like I didn't go around saying I was a millionaire when I was in my corporate job. When I was in a corporate job that I didn't like, I was like, I'm a full-time happiness coach and healer. I'm a full-time happiness coach and healer. And anytime that fears came up, I would play my recordings that I, I have so many recordings on my phone and I have recordings because it's like when that fear comes up and when I feel like the fear is getting bigger than my faith, I play it and then I'm like saying the incantations, the affirmations, you're just listening to it. If I'm like, okay, I'm doing other stuff right now, but I'm gonna like listen to these positive things because that'll totally shift your state and it'll get you in that higher vibration so you'll actually get to where you wanna go. So I love that you said that. Yay, see, it Yay. works. It so Great. works, guys, do it. it does work. <laughs> <laughs> Commit to the process and it works. Yes, I completely agree. So do you want to shift gears a bit and get into that meditation experience so they can tap yeah. into their earnings potential? <laughs> cool. I'm going to do a little med guided meditation for you. So okay. get comfortable, relax. Get somewhere you can close your eyes. I'm going to well, tell me if you can hear this music. Okay. I can totally hear it. Cool. So just take a deep breath and feel your body just notice how it feels take a deep breath deep into your belly and just really relax all of your all of your muscles anywhere you're holding tension send a little bit of breath there and just allow it to be 
Just accept everything for how it is. Relax your shoulders, relax your face. This is a chance for you to switch gears, to set you up for an amazing rest of your day. So let go of everything you've carried with you up until this point, all the stories, all the emotions, you don't need them anymore. Now is your time to sink in to your creative potential. Relax your mind, pay attention, and accept these words as your own. I am creative. I am powerful. I am free. I feel full of possibility. I feel full of trust. I acknowledge myself for all that I am. I am open to seeing my value more and more deeply every single day. I recognize the power of my creativity. With this body that can create human life, I can create miracles. With this imagination that can see any possibility, I can create whatever I desire. With this mind that can focus on any outcome I choose, I can create a life that I love. I already possess all I need for my life. I allow myself to tap into my true desires. I give myself permission to let my imagination run wild. I'm now open to earning more and more money. I'm open to earning money more easily than ever before. I'm growing my capacity to receive all the money I desire. And I acknowledge myself for this amazing work. Because I focus on all of the good things that will come from it. I feel more and more deserving of incredible wealth every single day. And I feel so grateful for every opportunity that comes my way. I am creative. I am powerful. I am unlimited. I am courageous. I trust in myself. I'm willing to think differently. I'm willing to tap into my desires. I choose to listen to myself first. I choose to let go of stories that don't serve me anymore. I choose to write a new story, starting today. I am a creative human being and I have that power. I have the power to choose the life I truly desire. I have the power to choose to take action on my dreams. I choose to fall in love with my vision for my dream life and I choose to connect with it every single day. I take inspired action and I trust that I know the right path for me. I choose love. I choose power. I choose trust. I choose creativity. I choose wealth. I choose fun. I choose light and I choose peace. Now take a deep breath and let all of that goodness soak into every single cell of your body and just notice how it feels. Notice the seat underneath you, notice your feet on the ground and just let that good feeling soak into every single cell of your body. Let it expand even beyond your physical body and know that you always have access to this state in every single moment. So take another deep breath, and when you're ready, you can open your eyes. That was beautiful, thank you so much. You're so welcome. Mm -hmm. 
Let us know how that was for you guys in the comments. Even if you're on the replay, you can let us know. I definitely saw a lot of like bright light. That was super fun. Of, like all the goodness, all the awesome stuff coming in. It's like oh. so cool. We lost her. I don't know if I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. I still look like I'm here. I don't know if I should reload. And I don't want to leave if she's going to leave. If, yeah. if you're still watching me. I'll let her know that um, I'm just, sec. just bear with me a couple minutes. <laughs> I'll open up my Facebook. And can you guys let us know if you still see us? Because five people are on. So can, okay. So maybe it's just her. Maybe she has to pop out and pop in. Hopefully her laptop didn't die in the middle of the conversation. <laughs> Okay, we see both of us. <laughs> so it's cool that you guys can still see us. So we're just gonna love be live and we're almost to the end of this. So that'll be good. Okay, okay. we're back. Hey. Hello. Can you hear me now? <laughs> we had so many energy from that meditation, guys. Yeah, energy is everything. Loving this. We hear you both. <laughs> awesome. So I'll leave that up there so that he knows that. <laughs> okay, so they can see and hear us both. Okay, yeah, I can see, I can hear you now too. Sorry. You just went no worries. Where is everyone? <laughs> I'm like, we had so much energy coming through there. <laughs> And then cool, Christine says, I can see and hear you both. Beautiful, beautiful. Cool. Awesome. So yeah, with all that energy, let us know how that beautiful meditation was for you guys. Maybe we'll ground the energy a little bit so BeLive can like handle all this awesomeness that we're throwing <laughs> at you. <laughs> so can you share with everyone how they can connect after the show and get more of your goodness into their lives? Yeah, so um, I'm always, um, sharing free content on my business page, which is okay. um, facebook.com forward slash Sarah Mac Big Creative Fun. And I'll mm -hmm. leave a link to that. Um, I also have a membership group, which is called Money Mindset for Creatives. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, ongoing support with mindset, with self care, with, um, you know, re um, reimagining your relationship to money and mm -hmm. earning it in a way that's really fun and aligned for you. I love really that. Building in, in, in the fact that that's possible, where I have, I have weekly trainings, I have support, Q and A's to support you in whatever your, it is that you're going through for whatever stage you're at. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're interested in joining that, I would love to offer to uh, viewers today a free one-on-one -on -one session as well mm -hmm. for anyone who joins um, within the next 24 hours from, from watching this. Yeah, as a little juicy sign up bonus. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I'm always launching new programs. So if you follow me on my business page, that's the best way to to um, keep up to date. Also, my Instagram is at with Sarah Mac. So I'd love to connect with you there too. I'm always open to hearing your questions, comments and feedback with, um, you know, whatever, whatever it is you um, would like to know and get support on. So cool. I love that. So yeah, check the comments, guys, and you'll get all the ways that you can connect with her, which is so fun. And Kat said we blew the circuits. <laughs> <laughs> oh, also, I actually have a recorded version of that meditation. Ooh. So I'll leave the link to that for you to download for free as well. Awesome. Thank you so much. I love that so much. And thank you guys for tuning in today and sharing the space. If you feel like you have a friend who needs this energy in their life, like this awesome energy that Sarah just put out <laughs> and needs that meditation and needs this kind of support and mindset shifts in their life, definitely share it to your friends. Sometimes people don't want to share it publicly because they're like, I don't want to like tell you and everyone in the world that your mindset may not be the greatest right now. You can also take the link and send them in a private message. So get the message out there to whoever needs it. You could be supporting your loved ones in ways that they don't even maybe know that they need it yet. So I encourage you guys to share it out, to like it and love it and share it on your pages or groups if you feel like they need that message as well. And I encourage you to continue to tune into the Love and Light show every Monday at 1 Eastern and 9 Pacific. So thank you so much for joining us today, Sarah. And I hope that you guys all have a wonderful week. Thank you so much, Laura. Thank you everybody for watching. It was great to be here. Um, thank you. Send you all so much love. Bye. Bye.